A very warm welcome to Cram and Kirk. Tonight, before we do the Watch Night service at 11.30, we have four very talented young musicians here, and they're going to entertain you for the next 25 minutes. 25 minutes. And they're going to play so many different instruments, but the important thing is you're allowed to applaud. <laughs> and the more you clap, the better they'll play. So will you give these young musicians lots of encouragement? Can I introduce them? Would that be good? Starting with the youngest, we've got Emma Louise, who's last year at school, is that right? And Emma's going to play violin and flute. Okay. And big sister, <laughs> is that all right? Big sister here as well. And you're going to be playing tonight just the flute. And you're in second year at Glasgow University. That's brilliant. Yep. And last but not least, Matthew and Callum. Well, they are enormous, aren't they, compared to the other two. And Matthew's going to be playing violin and piano and viola. And Callum's going to be playing anything you can blow. <laughs> so, will you give a, a big welcome to Emma Lewis, to Ailey, to Callum and to Matthew. Give them a wave.
Now, it's become a bit of an annual tradition at this point, but here is the Maidley Medley, uh, a huge, I think it's about 20 minutes, 18 minutes, a, a lot of Christmas carols back to back, so please enjoy.
If you think they played well, I'll give them a loud clap. Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to Cram and Kirk on Christmas Eve, a very important service for us here. We've already had a Christingle service earlier in the day and Christmas Day service tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, which includes communion. If you would like to make an offering, there is a plate as you leave at the end of the service. There will be responses. Most things will come up on the screen. And we invite you to share by saying out loud all the sections which are marked all. These are all the notices. Let us worship God together in our call to worship. The hour is near. God is waiting to be born. The journey is is at its close. God is waiting to be born. Life will never be the same again. God is waiting to be born. Peace on earth and goodwill to all. God is waiting to be born anew. We worship and sing together in the hymn 303, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. 
we will stand to sing. Let us approach God with confidence. Let us pray together. Please be seated. Lord, we remember how Bethlehem was a shambles, full of activity yet unprepared for its cosmic guest. And that's how it can be in our lives, O oh Lord. Christmas cards which read like a Roman census, guests to plan for, presents to pack. Help us in this period of worship to stop, to pause, to begin a different set of preparations, even to take stock of our priorities, our relations and hopes, that we may be in the right frame of mind to embrace this season with its promise of peace, its announcement of joy, and its opportunity to make a new beginning. Lord, hear our prayers. 
Amen. The reading tonight is familiar. It comes from Luke's Gospel at chapter 2. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When the first census took place, Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own town. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant. And while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. Now there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending their night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and shone over them. They were terribly afraid. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you. It will bring great joy to all the people. This very day, in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. Thanks to God for this reading from his word. To his name be the honor and the praise. We're now going to light our Advent candles. They help us to cut, count down in church the Sundays until Christmas Day. And later in the service, we will light the Christmas candle, the white candle at the center of the Advent crown. So over the weeks in church and in most churches, we light a candle to remember all God's people in every age and day, and that includes ourselves. We light a candle to remember the prophets who prepared the way for Christ. We light a candle for John the Baptist, Jesus' cousin who baptized him. And we light a candle for Mary, the mother of Jesus, who gave birth all those years ago. In the 19th century, Philip Brooks, who was an esteemed American minister at the time, took a trip to Israel-Palestine and he took a horse and he journeyed through the plains to Bethlehem. And when he came back, he was so inspired, he wrote this hymn, one of the most famous of our Christmas carols, O Little Town of Bethlehem. You'll find it at hymn 304, and the words have appeared on the screen.
In Cram and Kirk, as you look around, you can see we have organized a Christmas tree festival this year. Christmas tree festivals have been running in Britain for just over a decade. And this festival is marking Christmas around the world. If you haven't seen the trees before, you might want to take a couple of minutes at the end of the service to notice trees from United States and Iceland and Greenland and notice who created them. Um, people from our local schools, people from the uniformed organizations, people from Fresh Start, a local charity. I wanted to point out two or three trees as part of this talk, and the first one is right at the door on my left, which is the German tree, and it tells the story of the Christingle. The Christingle was designed in the 18th century and allowed us to understand that God had created the world and loved the world so much he gave his son. And so it comes as an orange representing the world. It comes with a band of red which represent God's love for the world and Christ's sacrifice and it presents the good gifts of four seasons and Christ the central candle, the light of the world. Just next to that is the cargo field tree and the cargo field tree represents whales. So unsurprisingly, there are leaks and references to rugby and of course, Shirley Bassey and people singing because you have to have some fun at Christmas. And the tree that's on the ground marks all the babies we know who were born in 2022. And so you can still add names to that tree. And the tree behind me is all the loved ones who lost somebody during the year. Church represents the high times, the bright times, and the difficult times. And the tree low down on my right comes from Kraman Primary, and it represents Denmark. And one of the things you maybe know if you've been to Denmark at Christmas is that they not only design Christmas trees and have them around, they dance on this day, the 24th of December. People get out and they dance around the trees. People in Northern Europe in particular really love Christmas. But I wanted to tell you a little story about a tree right at the back. It's from Malawi. And I'm going to tell you a story which I think has relevance and reference to Christmas. In another congregation, I once took a trip to Malawi and we visited Malangi Mountain and Malangi Mission Hospital. It was my surprise that we spent the Sunday afternoon in prison. I wondered really what we were doing with 250 male prisoners and one female prisoner in an open prison. It was an extraordinary experience. Things were very tough in that prison. There was one water standpipe for everybody. There were no beds in the prison. There were some shelters where the men slept on the ground. The woman was in a separate room, I'm glad to say. But we were there because the medical director of the hospital, the only doctor in that hospital, went every Sunday because she wanted to check that the woman was all right. And she took with her the members of the Women's Guild. The Women's Guild were dressed up in white and red costumes and every Sunday afternoon they carried with them juice and food and soap. They were the only people who visited the prison. Prisoners in Malawi get trapped in these prisons because the local community decides if they can come back. And if they've committed an offence like stealing and haven't admitted to it, or doing something like murder and the local community doesn't want them to come back, they just stick in prison. So they were in prison really separated from the rest of society 
And every Sunday afternoon, as you've heard me say, this group of women appeared there and not only gave them soap and drinks and food, they gave them something else. They sang to them. I was cautious about how this would be received. And I was astonished when after they stopped singing, the prisoners divided into three groups. They were choirs and they sang back to the women. And I thought the Christian faith is about starting very small and doing something consistently, whether it's recognized or valued or not. People have been celebrating Christmas in this building for 1,400 years. It's never been celebrated in quite this way, and people have never heard that story, but people have gathered on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, for 1,400 years here on this site. I find that mind-blowing and stretching. Somebody else decided that not only should we remember Malawi, but we should remember as Christians all those who are struggling. And they decided to rewrite O Little Town of Bethlehem. This is the version by Wendy Ross Barker. I'm going to read it to you. O sad and troubled Bethlehem, we hear your longing cry for peace and justice to be born and cruel oppression die. How deep your need for that great gift of love in human form. Let Christ in you be seen again and hearts by hope made warm. While morning stars and evening stars shine out of your dark sky, despair now stalks troubled streets and innocence still die. And Jesus, child of Mary, whose love will never cease, feels even now your pain and fear, longs with you for peace. Amazingly and lovingly, Jesus, the child, has come and brought to birth through human pain, makes broken hearts his home. He comes to comfort all who weep, to challenge every wrong, and living with the weak and poor becomes their hope, their song. We're going to ask Emma, who's one of our choir members, to sing a hymn for us now, and it's about the birth of Christ, Emma.
lots of traditions to celebrate Christmas, many of them hugely joyful. In Mexico, people go out onto the street, they dress up as shepherds, and they reenact the Christmas story, engaging everybody in the streets as they're shopping and gathering. In Ukraine, there's a tree for Ukraine, of course. People walk through the towns and enjoy meeting each other. They wear their traditional clothes. It's an important event in Ukraine. In Finland, it starts on Christmas Day with porridge, including cinnamon and butter. However, there's an almond hidden in the porridge, and whoever wins finds the almond in their porridge. It may be not what you're looking forward to tomorrow morning, but we hope you're going to have some good food and have some good fun. But you might prefer the end of the day in Finland because they decide that it's customary to end up in a sauna together, and that can be great fun in very cold weather as they have there. Of course, Christmas begins in some countries almost at the beginning of December, and it runs through to the 6th and sometimes the 7th of January before people open gifts. Sometimes they have socks, sometimes they have shoes, sometimes they have sacks, a lot of gifts. Sometimes it's sharing with the poor, sometimes it's engaging with family. Whatever your marking of Christmas, we hope you have a wonderful time and you join with us now as we sing a hymn. It's called, When Out of Poverty is Born, and Emma is going to sing the first verse for us. It's hymn 291, and then we'll stand and join in. you to turn to your neighbours on your left and your right and to offer them a very Merry Christmas as I light the Christmas candle.
Please be seated as we bring our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others, and then conclude the service with a hymn and then a sending out. Let us pray. O God, with us, Emmanuel, we give thanks for being able to gather together in good health and in good standing with one another and to be in this beautiful place and to mark the birth of your Son. We give thanks for the way we can celebrate tomorrow by giving and receiving gifts, for the joy of sharing good food, and for the pleasure we have of meeting family, neighbor, and friends. Living God, we also remember those less fortunate in the Cramond community and in the parishes surrounding us and around the world. We remember people without food or adequate shelter clothes or medical supplies. We pray for leadership in the church, in politics and right across the world that all may keep their eyes on peace. Peace in Ukraine, peace in Yemen, peace around the world. We pray that not only we can produce words but also can produce actions, that we can work together to make this a safer, more stable world where all are valued, all are remembered, and not even prisoners in Malawi are forgotten on a Sunday. Living God, we join our prayers to the whole church in heaven and on earth as we pray together in Jesus' words, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to sing together, O come all ye faithful. I invite you to stand and sing lustily. It's a great hymn to finish on.
And now let us go receiving love and joy and peace, good gifts made for sharing on Christmas Day. And so let us give to others love and joy and peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon us and remain with us from this day and forevermore. Amen. We invite you to be seated. Emma's going to help us to sing, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And as you sing, you can then begin to journey out and we can greet one another at the door. Thank you. 